please welcome, please, Marky Ball. Everyone want to give me a high five? Light. Oh yeah, high five baby. Can we turn the light on? Oh sure, yeah. Oh, we're looking red. Looking good today. Everybody in the back. Let's see the way back there. Okay. Oh. All right, you've all been dealing with a lot of words today, so I thought I'd start off with some non words. Because numbers are fun too. That means that the majority of you here in the room 
could benefit from what I call non-dual energetic therapy. Because that's what this therapy is about. It's about helping you reach that place within yourself. Now for me, the primary tool for doing this form of therapy is 5-methoxy-5-methyltryptamine. It's not the only tool you can use. Pretty much any psychedelic or entheogen can be used in this capacity. 5 mo dmt is the best. It's the top of the line, it's the end of the road, it's the first, last, and always, it's the crown jewel, it's the god molecule, it's all these things. So it's, it's really the bomb, it's the one to go for. And you guys all know that because you're here, or at least you're curious about that. Um, maybe you haven't had the opportunity to experience it yet. But if you're here, I suspect that you will at some point. Um, and also, this form of energetic therapy, here's the fun part, actually, no medicine is needed, no psychedelics are needed. Now, it's far more effective to use these methodologies and these techniques if you're working with 5-MeO-DMT or other psychedelics, but pretty much everything that I've written in this book here um, I say that, look, this is a methodology that I developed out of working with 5-MeO-DMT, so that's where it originated. But you can use it with any psychedelic, and you can use it without psychedelics. And everything that I've written about in here in terms of what the methodologies are, what the practices are, you can do that anytime, anywhere, any day. Because one of the things that happens with people, especially with 5-MeO-DMT, is that it becomes this disjuncture. And maybe you've experienced this, where you go into these full non-dual states where it's like, wow, everything is God. And I'm just resting in that, and it's, it's ecstatic, and it's infinite. Love, 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 and it's just that yes. And I've seen this happen to many people. The ego comes back, and maybe they start to cry. And some people just, no, let me go back, let me go back. Why can't I just stay there? Well, to some degree, you can. Not in the fully absorbed and non-dual state, because, okay, here's what you do when you're in the fully absorbed and non-dual state. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, what do you, it's great, it's great, I highly recommend it, but there's not a lot going on there, because there's everything going on there, and I, for one, I love the, the fully absorbed and non-dual state, but, Man, I'd really be disappointed if I missed season eight of Game of Thrones. <laughs> so I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for the next season to come along. And then if you're all feeling the fully absorbed in non dual state, then there's no Game of Thrones there. <laughs> there, also, there, are, there are certain things I like to do with my wife. And I can't do that in the completely absorbed in non dual state because she's not there either. So there's, there's certainly many benefits to residing within the dualistic realm of self and other, subject and object, me and you. Because we get to enjoy each other. I mean, let's be honest. Why the fuck is God doing all this? Because God's lonely and fucking bored, okay? Because out there in the, whoa, it's all one! Damn, what do I do now? <laughs> it's a lot more fun if you get to play with others. And it's a lot of fun if those others are so convinced that they're the person that they think they are that it makes all kinds of drama and passion. Because, again, we can use like Game of Thrones. I mean, it'd be a really fucking boring show if everyone's just sitting on their throne. You cool? Yeah, I'm cool. But yeah, cool. All right. Want to fight? Nah. Okay. What do we do? I don't know, but I don't think this is going to last for eight seasons. <laughs> so it's our attachment to our identity that creates the fun and the drama. That this is, we are God's altered state. This is, this is God's virtual reality right here. It's like, whoa, man, I'm tripping really fucking hard. There's other people here. <laughs> whoa, there's bright lights and shit. This is really cool. Because we get to do things here in this realm. We get to experience, and we get to share. That's really, that's one of the great things. Okay, I, when I think about it, there's a few things that God can do. Just bliss out, you know, that's cool. But God's been doing that for eternity, so it's, it's more fun to have a little action. 
Um, so then here in the dualistic realm, um, God gets to share with itself. And as I'm sure you know, everything gets better when you share it. If you like something, it's like, oh man, I want to share this with you. This is really cool. And you've probably experienced this with 5 and you like, damn, I want to share this shit with everybody. I want to share this with the world. Because sharing it is when you open your heart and you say, hey, here's a little bit of me and I want to share that with you. And does that resonate with you? And he's like, yeah, people are jiving on it. That's cool. So God likes to share. What else can God do to itself in this dualistic realm? Ooh, make love. Yes. That's a good one. Man, you know, there's certain aspects you can do that all by yourself, but it's a lot more fun than somebody else. Because, And that goes back to sharing, doesn't it? Sharing your experience, sharing your energy, sharing your being. And going into that state of unity with somebody, it's beautiful, it's intimate, it's profound. So, God likes to share. God likes to make love. Being kind, that's a good one too. And you need somebody else to be kind to. But, you know, there's other sides to this too. Since we're all just God running around, God loves to eat itself. It is a God-eat-God world out there. And consuming another version of yourself, so satisfying. What does everybody say when they have a baby? It's like, oh, you're just so cute, I want to eat you up. <laughs> And it's weird. It's like all parents are like, I don't want to eat my kid. I don't know why. That's really damn weird. And you get their, you get their little heads and you, you smell their head. It's like, damn, that smells good. You want to hit off of this? Want to hit off of this? You want to eat it? Yeah, let's eat it. But we all know, hey, man, don't do that. Don't eat your baby. But we have that desire. And, you know, let's be honest. Another thrill of being God in a body is that God I mean, let's be honest. Let's look at human history. Violence is, you know, it's kind of fun, you know, because when it comes down to it, there's only one winner and there's only one loser, and they're the same damn thing, okay? Now, from our egoic perspective, you say, hey, man, that's not cool. Don't be killing me. I don't like what you're doing. You did that to me, damn you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to get rid of you. We love these oppositions. And then we take, love to take offense at it. Like, oh, man, that one did that to me. I'm going to go fuck that one over. Kill that one. But it's all God. You see? So all these things that we're attached to, that we think this is right, this is wrong, this is good, this is bad. I want to be like this. I don't want to be like that. These are all just categories that we've created for ourselves. And then we take them on as our self-definition. This is me. This is who I am. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the way the ego functions. I almost said your name. Like Hal said, you know, it's about making distinction. And there's a good survival strategy to that because, you know, you can just be out there blissed out all the time. Oh, kick the toad. <laughs> but see, if you're not aware of ob objects, right, you might kick a toad. Or... If you want some water, you know, you're going to need a little subject-object relationship and distinction or else like, where's the water? I am the water. Anybody else ever experienced I am the water? Yeah, you are the water. You're everything else too. But if you want to drink the water, you know, this was somewhere in, I don't know, maybe my third or fourth 5-MEO experience with Hal. I like to remind him it's always his fault. Yeah. That's when and I gave him a signed copy of Entheogenic Liberation. I wrote, always remember, it's all your fault. Because <laughs> he's, he's the one who introduced me to the medicine. Anyway, maybe third or fourth time around with the medicine, I just started talking. I am water and I am everywhere. I can take any shape. I can fill any form. And remember, I will always reflect you for I am you. And I am thirsty. <laughs> I am water. So how do we ride that paradox between subject, object, duality, self, and other, me and not me? And that's the real power of the medicine. And not just the power of the medicine, but also 
methodologies that you can use to help ground that into your sense of being, your everyday sense of being, so that you don't have that, oh, man, I'm in the five, woo, and then, oh, fuck, I'm back here. Shit, you mean I got to pay bills? I got to wipe my ass? I got to brush my teeth? Are you fucking serious? I thought I died, man. Why the fuck am I back here again? I got to deal with all you fucking people, all this shit, damn it, oh, man. So it's about learning how to be free, how to be recognized that that's you that infinite source of unconditional love. It's you all the time. But that doesn't negate your desires. You are water, but you can still be thirsty and you might still need to drink. Just because you are that doesn't mean you don't also need it or want it or have relationship with it. The non-dual experience does not negate the dual experience in any way because this is where the fucking party is happening. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, I I have seen this, where some people want to leave the party early because they want to get back there. It's like, no, that man, that was home. This is where I'm a stranger. And you're not a stranger here. You've been evolving yourself for billions of years precisely so that you can be right here. And this... This is one of my personal irks that I have with a lot of religious and spiritual traditions. Is that they, they were like, oh, I want to get out of here. I've got to get back home. I've got to get out of this mess, this illusion, this impure realm, this physic, gross physical matter that has entrapped me here. How the fuck do I get out? I know. I'll just sit on my ass and meditate for 40 years, and then maybe when I die, I won't reincarnate, and I'll be out of this goddamn place. It's like, um, it's actually going the other way. I mean, haven't you noticed that God is trying to get in? And that's what Rack was talking about, okay? Because what we're dealing with here is, you know, and, and this is my view. You don't have to share it. It's my view. My view is that human beings are like God toddlers, just like little kids. Every, see, each and every one is like God, 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 God. Okay, each one is God. But they're all running around believing in Santa Claus. Man, when, when's Buddha coming back? When's Jesus coming back? When's the Mahdi going to fucking get here? When's, when is God going to clean up this fucking mess and punish the, the wicked people and, you know, bring enlightenment for everybody? You know, so there's all these ideas about what it means to be human and what is the purpose of being human. That's why back in 2009, I wrote my book, Being Human. Because being human is to be God in a body, in the realm that is God. There is no difference between what is right here, right now, and the full 5-MeO-DMT state. No difference whatsoever. With the possible exception of your egoic identity. That thing that you think is you that you've become attached to, and you say, oh yeah, that's me. So the ego. The ego is a collection of energetic patterns. As is everything else, am I right? Because that's all that exists. What is God? God is a being of infinite fractal energy that is made out of infinite unconditional love. That's all that God is. And God is conscious and aware. And here, through billions of years of evolution, through cosmic scales of creation and destruction and planetary systems and suns and all the rest of that and nebula and quasars and black holes and... Damn, I like space. Space is cool. Space is the place. Anyway, through all of that, all these patterns of energy, we get us. And so the ego is no different. It's just patterns of energy. Because we are energy beings. kind of makes me laugh when sometimes people say, well, maybe at some point human beings will evolve into pure energy beings. What the fuck do you think you are right now? You are a pure energy being right now. You have always been a pure energy being. You think, oh, no, man, my energy is different from my body. What? Your body is made up of quarks, which are packets of energy. And those quarks, 
They coalesce together into atoms, which are packets of energy. And those atoms coalesce into molecules, which are patterns of energy. And you put enough of them together in the right combination, to boom, you get a human being. Mostly carbon. 60% water. Bags of mostly water. That was a great quote from the old Star Trek. Some artificial intelligence. Oh, you carbon-based light forms. Bags of mostly water. That's us. So the ego is also just a collection of patterns of energy. Ways that you think. Ways you act. The ways that you use your voice. The ways that you gesture. The ways that you allow your energy to inhabit your body and express itself. And we're self-aware. We're self-conscious. So we attach our identity to these patterns. I talk this way. I act this way. I believe these things. I like this. I don't like that. And we say, well, that's me. And then we use meta-egos also to bolster our individual ego. I'm an American. I'm a Christian. I'm a Buddhist. I'm a Jew. I'm a Muslim. I'm a terrorist. I'm a Republican. I'm a Trump supporter. I'm a Hillary supporter. I'm an indigenous person. I'm a shaman. I'm a mystic. I'm a priest. I'm your mother. I'm your brother. I'm your father. Right? These are all meta-egos, ways that we define our identities. But that's a limiting function, right? Because you are God. You are everything. That the boundaries that we experience, that what we think of as our ourself, these are just relative boundaries. They're not absolute boundaries. So relatively speaking, I can knock on that and say, hey man, that's wood and this is my hand and that's not me. But that's just relative. At the energetic level, this is me. It's not Martin. Martin is the character of the persona that inhabits this body. But you see, I'm not Martin. Well, Martin isn't me. Because I am Martin, just as I am all things. Just as you are all things, because we are one. There is no fundamental, absolute difference between us. We are simply one, pretending, playing, enjoying the experience that I appear to be over here and you appear to be over there, yet in truth, there is only one. But we attach ourselves and we say, oh yeah, that's me. You see, we say, I am this identity. And fuck you, God, why do you put me here? Why are you doing this? That's one that I got a lot in doing sessions with people. People looking right at me. Fuck you, God! Sorry, I didn't mean to do that so loud. I don't mean to blow out anybody's ears. I get excited. I don't censor myself. I don't inhibit my energy. I go with the flow. Sometimes it gets me in trouble. I don't mind. Because to be yourself, to be free, means that as a being of energy, it is to inhabit and express your energy authentically. Because that is your task. Your task is not to fix the world. Your task is not to fix other people. Your task is not to tell other people what to do or how to be or what to think. Your one and only genuine task is to be yourself. And I guarantee you, if everybody did that, there would be no problem whatsoever. But you see, people spend their lives trying to be the person, not that they are, not the being that they are, but the being that they think they should be. They create an idea, they attach themselves to it, and then they get all pissy when things don't go their way. Well, I didn't want it to go that way. And the ego just wants to control everything. It wants to control you. It wants to control others. It wants to control outcomes. It wants to define meaning and value. And unfortunately, because of that, it's fucking with you. It's getting in your way of you just being you. 
So I haven't talked about any of the methods or techniques. And we don't really have a whole lot of time for that because we're already at 623. Um, no, I can't really do that. But, you know, I shared a little bit about that yesterday. So today I'm just kind of expressing myself of why I'm interested in this, what it means for me. And I'm showing you a little bit of myself about what it really means to inhabit your energy and express yourself as you truly are. So you might have noticed that this sort of strange thing happens with my voice. And I've seen this in plenty of others, but very short periods of time. They go all the way into 5-MEO, and they say, yes, I am. And then afterwards, the ego comes back and says, like, whoa, did I say something? Who was that? So for me, you know, my process wrapped up almost a little more than nine years ago now when I took my last round of 5-MeO-DMT. And Martin didn't come back. He didn't come back except to teach at the university, Southern Oregon University, where uh, I'm an adjunct professor. So Martin showed up, much to my and his surprise. I know that the language issue is a little bit awkward. But anyway, much to our surprise, I'll just use the plural, the royal pronoun, we. When we went to school, and my student said, hey, professor. And I said, oh, hi. He's like, oh, that's really weird. Martin's back. Curious. What? Strange experience. Because I, I thought, hey, man, I'm going to school, and I'm going to get in front of my students, and they're going to say, hi, professor. And I'm going to say, yes, hello. We are here, are we not? And it's like, that's going to be the end of Martin's job. But no, Martin showed up for work. So I was like, hey, that's pretty sweet. I didn't try and control that. I didn't try and protect my job. I didn't try and determine the outcome. Yet Martin showed up when he needed to. And then when we, I, we, see, I did it again. We went home, and we ran into our wife, and our wife said, how did school go? And I said, it was quite fascinating. And then I was back, you see. And I was like that for a long time. When I was not out in public socializing, I was just myself as I am. So these days, I reside in Martin a bit more just because, you know, it's comfortable. I don't have a problem with Martin. He's a good guy. I like him. So I don't mind if he uses, you know, this vehicle. I mean, this is his vehicle after all. And, you know, like, if we want to get technical, like, fucking this one's is his. So he can use it. You know, we share the space. But see, it's all just me. But there's a continuum of being. There's the, your egoic identity, and then there's what you really are. And in the most non-altruistic way possible, because I don't really give a shit about other people, because they're just me. <laughs> you see, I want to share this with other people because I'm them and they're me. And my love, my infinite unconditional love, is for myself. And I do not distinguish between this version of myself and these other versions of myself. So, oh yeah, sure, why not? I'll take it. And so, yeah, how many hands are clapping? I like Bart's answer to that. What is the sound of one hand clapping? I love a good smart ass. Um, anyway, so that, that's what motivates me to give these talks, to write these books, is that I'm just trying to help other versions of myself. And in doing that, um, I've tried to write, because I think the 5-MEO DMT is, like I said, it's the top of the line. It's the big guns. It's, it's what it's all about. Um, I've tried to write a book that I feel is probably the most definitive book on the 5-MeO-DMT experience that exists out there because the level of detail that's in this book I think is fairly incomparable. But it also goes through the methodology of what is non-dual energetic therapy. How can you use this molecule to really liberate yourself from yourself? That's the ultimate task so that you can be yourself. And I know that sounds like a tongue twister, but that's what it's all about. And that's why I'm here. And I'm probably pretty much out of time. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. So um, I'll just let you know that I, bought, I brought party favors if anybody wants one. I have some stickers of some of my uh, fractal art. And so if you, if you want a sticker, so if you want to take a piece of me home with you, <laughs> I'll give you a sticker. All right? So thank you, everybody. It's been fun. <laughs>